Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Willy, and today we're going to cover everything you need to know about your mount in Classic. Which mounts are available, for who, how to get them, how much they cost, are there any rare mounts, where do I get my mount? Stay tuned as we take a proper look into the mount system in Classic. Mounts were far rarer in Classic, and for a majority of the player base, just having one will be an achievement, let alone an epic mount eventually. In retail, they really have turned into a number that you just want to get higher in a collection log, with only a few that really stand out. First thing first, there's no mount tab where all your mounts are kept, like retail. They're an item in your bag. Also, mounts had a 3 second cast time instead of today's 1.5 second cast, and were not usable in water. Going in water auto dismounted you. Also, no flying. Blizzard have reverted back to the old, old mount system which had race specific skills instead of a profession. So for example, a night elf would learn tiger riding and a tauren would learn kodo riding. There is only one tier of riding skill and the actual mounts themselves are locked behind a level requirement. If you wanted to use another race's mount, you need to buy their riding skill first, and we'll look more at this later. Your first mount will be at level 40 and this will pretty much always be your racial mount. Riding skill itself costs 20 gold, level 40 mounts 100 gold and increase your movement speed by 60%, level 60 mounts are 1000 gold and increase your movement speed by 100%. 100 gold by level 40 is no small amount, however there are some ways to get discounts, two in particular. And whilst you may not have both by level 40, by level 60 it may be a bit more realistic. First of all, being honoured with the faction that you're buying from will give you a 10% discount. Secondly, being ranked 3 in PvP gives you a further 10% discount. This won't be available until phase 2 though, as PvP ranks don't exist until then. Mounts are bind on equip, so if you have a friend who has both of the discounts, they can get it for you and trade it over. If you did want to use another race's mount, you need it exalted with the faction you're buying from, so if you're a human and want a sweet looking knight saber, you're gonna need to be exalted with Darn Nassus. Seeing anyone on another faction mount was pretty rare and it took a serious amount of grinding and gold, but for some reason this didn't apply for PvP mounts. Also you don't need any specific reputation to buy your own races mount. On top of this there were some restrictions on who can ride certain mounts, only gnomes and dwarves could ride mechano striders, and Tauren could not ride skeletal warhorses or raptors, this did extend to PvP mounts. With all that said, let's look at the racial mounts. Each has 3 level 40 and 3 level 60 mounts, which are recolors of the same two models, and you can see what you're buying next to the mount vendor. Let's take a quick look at where you learn your riding skill. The vendor for the mount will be nearby. Tauren from Bloodhoof Village in Mulgore. Orcs from the Valley of Honor in Orgrimmar. Undead from Brill in Tirisfall Glades. Trolls from Senjin Village, just south of Orgrimmar. Humans from Eastvale Logging Camp in Eastern Elwyn Forest. Night Elves from the Cenarian Enclave in Darnassus. Dwarves from Amberstill Ranch in Dunmurra. And Gnomes from Steel Grills Depot just northeast of Karanos in Dunmurra. There was also one faction specific mount, the Winter Spring Frost Saber, which had a unique colour making it stand out quite a bit. This was obtained by getting exalted with the Winter Spring Trainers in Winter Spring, funnily enough, and required you to complete a lot of daily quests. Horde didn't have an equivalent in Classic, they got the grind later for the Venom Hive Ravasaur in Wrath of the Lich King. So that covers the basic info and the racial mounts, but there are plenty more mounts to go after for the avid collector, and you really do have to be a bit of a madman to collect mounts in Classic. Before we go on, let's make a quick note on the class mounts. Both Warlock and Paladin got their mount and riding skill for free at level 40. These mounts were actually spells, so they didn't take up a bag slot either, which is pretty cool. At level 60, both also had a quest to learn an epic version of their class mount, which had the coveted 100% movement speed increase. Dreadsteed for Warlocks, Charger for Paladins. These, however, were not free, and each quest had large gold sinks involved, We'll have to see how the prices look on Classic. Many people say the Paladin Charger quest could cost more than this standard 1000 gold for an epic mount. Whereas the Warlock one was a lot cheaper, around the 500 or so gold mark. Finally, both these quests require Diamol, which will not be opened until Phase 2. If you are playing Hardcore come release, you're gonna have to fork out the 1k gold for the mount in the regular way, or just wait till Phase 2. Next up, PvP mounts, and I've mentioned these once or twice so far, these are variations of each racial mount, 
with a different look and armor on them. And overall, these are some of the best looking mounts in Classic, like the Brains of the Black War Tiger. These mounts are available next to your faction PvP vendors and cost 100 gold. However, they also require rank 11 in PvP. This is a pretty massive grind for sure, and I may look at the PvP ranking system in detail in the future. And of course, PvP ranks aren't available until Phase 2, so you won't be able to work your way towards these mounts until then. Finally, in Phase 3, there are mounts from Reaching Exalted with your Alteric Valley faction, Stormpike Guard for Alliance, rewarding the Stormpike Battle Charger for 800 gold, and for the Horde, Frostwolf Clan gave the Frostwolf Howler for 800 gold. Okay, so those are the mounts you can work towards. They may all be a pretty huge grind, but they do have a definitive endpoint as to when you'll get them, either through gold or reputation. So how about the rare drop mounts? There are only a few. In phase 1, the only rare drop mount is Rivendare's Death Charger, dropped by Baron Rivendare in Strathon Deadside. He's the last boss of a fairly late game dungeon. This may be soluble with loads of buffs and gear from Nax Ramus for certain classes, but we'll have to wait and see. The odds for this dropping are insanely low, with databases showing it at 0.02% drop chance, or 1 in 5,000. And then you have to roll off between four other people most of the time. If you win this, go and buy a lottery ticket straight away. Even seeing one of these will be unlikely. This is also the only way for the Alliance to get an undead horse mount. This mount is definitely a badge of prestige. Next set of rare drops come from Phase 4 from Zul Gurum. The Swift Rizashi Raptor from Blood Lord Mandakir, and the Swift Zulian Tiger from High Priest Thekel. Both these mounts could be used by either faction. The Zulian Tiger looks amazing. I think I'm just a bit of a fan of the Night Saber model, really. Both of these were also super rare drops, almost certainly below 1%. This isn't evidenced in databases, but it's a pretty safe assumption. On top of this, you're rolling off against 19 other people, and you can only clear this place once a week, so good luck. The final set of mounts come in Phase 5 with the opening of AQ40. First of all, the blue, green, and yellow resonating crystals give you a cool looking battle tank mount. These were a decent drop chance from many of the trash mobs in AQ40, and were meant to be easy to get as a form of transport through this massive raid zone, since once you defeat the first boss in AQ40, you can no longer use your normal mounts. So everyone getting one of these was a priority to help cover ground faster. There was also a red variant too, which had a much lower drop chance. These mounts were 100% speed, but only worked inside of AQ40. There was one mount, however, that worked outside of AQ40, but this was a much less frequent sight. And that was the black resonating crystal, summoning the black battle tank. If you've seen some of the epic weapon quest lines and think they look long, they have nothing on this quest. No other quest in the game has anything on this. The requirements are actually insane. The goal of this quest is to bang a gong with the Scepter of the Shifting Sands. The reward for this is the Scarab Lord title and the Black Battle Tank mount. However, once the first person has rung the gong, all other eligible people must do so within 10 hours or their grinding and hard work are lost. This action also opens the gates for AQ40 on your server, as well as releasing loads of elite onto the gathered masses outside the gates. This basically meant that time for the gong to be rung was agreed in advance, and that more or less every person on the server would be in Silithus as the elite mobs poured out of the gates. This crashed the servers in Classic. People missed ringing the gong due to login issues. I can't wait to see how this plays out for a second time. The whole quest line contained 32 quests total, so I'm not going to cover it all. I'll give you some ideas of the requirements though. Um, 42,000 Silithid Carapace Fragments. Friends can help with this, you get 1 to 4 per elite kill. Defeat Broodlord Lashlayer. Defeat Nefarian. Complete an event that needs an entire raid group. Defeat Ragnaros, as well as many, many, many more quests. Also, the quest items are only lootable by one person per run. This is a true guild effort for an amazing reward. Even to this day, you barely see anyone with this title and mount, and it's easy to see why. Final set of mounts to look at are the unarmored mounts, which currently are not included within Classic, and here is Blizzard's stance on why. We aren't putting back the unarmored mounts, we just talked about this recently, internally. We know some people are interested in them, but don't want to put them in for a limited period of time, because we didn't want to influence people through their first leveling experience. This reads to me as we'll put them in eventually in a later phase, but we don't want them in the game straight away, as people may be pressured into playing more than they would otherwise to get these mounts before they're removed. And these mounts were obtained from the same place as any other of your racial mounts, but were removed a few months into vanilla. 
So there is your mount. Roundup works a little differently from today and takes a whole lot more effort to get your hands on a mount in general. Are you mount collectors out there, good luck. This is going to take some serious effort, but hey, each mount is a huge reward. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, bye.